my beautiful friends and welcome to your horoscope for the week of February 3rd where it is a full moon week. It is also a week where we've got our planets, Mercury, logical, information, communication, moving out of a logical sign and moving into a very emotional sign. So we will all begin to feel that shift. Some people may be celebrating a return with that. As well, we've got Venus, our love, money, harmony, all the delicious moving out of the energy of Aquarius and moving into the or moving out of the energy of Pisces and moving into the energy of Aries. So Venus too, everybody's a little bit uncomfortable, but there's still work to be done. That's kind of the theme that we've got going on this week. So let's talk about how we use all of this and when it is happening. First and foremost, at the beginning of the week, Monday, February 3rd, we've got Mercury, communication, logic, details information. It's just like we need all of the information. He is moving out of this highly mentally hyperactive energy of Aquarius where we were thinking new ways, thinking of new things, having different communications. People were talking to us. It was a very busy kind of energy and he's moving out of that logical intellectual space into the energy of Pisces where now Mercury is wrapped in the waters. He's like drenched in these waters of emotion. So he cannot just use intellect to power through. So this is a very difficult position. We call it fall for Mercury, which means he is not passionate, he is not powerful, and he is not just trudging through here. But it's not like when a planet moves to fall, this is where all the planets go to die. That's not what happens. Planets are more comfortable in some places than they are in others, but there's still work that can be done here. So what does this look like? Mercury in Pisces is emotional. It's creative. It is inspirational. It speaks to the parts of your mind that even though very logical, remember, there is a journey from heart to head that has to continue to happen if we're going to stay inspired and if we're going to stay creative and on fire. So here you're getting to be in the waters of inspiration, imagination. What are your dreams? What do you want to create? And you're getting to take Mercury's power into the details of seeing into the dream. Right? What's the vision here? This is not a strong placement for making big business decisions, however. Because with Mercury here, the details are blurry, right? He is blurred out by the water of Pisces, so you're maybe not seeing things as clearly. Instead, you're having to really trust some decisions at your gut level reaction, and that is fine, and this is a fine energy to still make movements and make things happen in a forward motion, but what you've got to do is trust your gut, but also run information by another person so that you guys can hash out the details, the very best that you can because the details are not completely clear. Now another thing that can happen while Mercury is in Pisces is because the information is not clear, deception becomes available on the table, right? And that can look a couple different ways, my friends. First of all, you could just lie, right? This could be a position where you lie and it happens and I love us all, but you could lie or there could be some level of dishonesty that is on the table. Now, I've always been taught that dishonesty shows up in three different forms. The first is delusion, right? And this is usually what catches most of us is delusion. My head is showing me one thing and it's coming from my perception, right? So my head is showing me one thing and then I make decisions in my reality based out of what's happening up here, which may not be the same as reality. And then usually I come into conflict or collision with another person place or thing, right? And it's just because I wasn't seeing things clearly. The other one is just an outright lie. I just open my mouth and a lie comes out. There you have it, right? That's the old-fashioned outright lie. And the other one is omission. I receive or I give a half truth. And I am telling you, under the energy of Mercury and Pisces, one of these forms of delusion or dishonesty could present itself. So you want to make sure that you get another person's set of eyes on the things that you're doing so you can just make sure things are as above board as possible, okay? Now, as we continue to travel on, something I want you to consider in the timing of all of this is that Mercury is going to retrograde as well in the energy of Pisces, between Pisces and Aquarian energy. So, and that's going to happen this month. It's going to happen in February. We'll talk about it next week. Anyways, so we have this placement here a little bit longer than normal, 
right? So as we move into the retrograde of this, you may be looking back over something from the past where maybe dishonesty has come up, or maybe even the dishonesty is that you didn't trust your gut or you didn't trust your intuition when it came to the table and you made um, a different decision, right? So you'll get to relook at all of that stuff, but keep in mind that longer than just being three weeks in this sign, Mercury will retrograde, so we'll have him here for quite some time to use this as inspiration, but also to be on the watch, okay? Now, as we continue to travel this week, we've got on Friday, February 7th, we've got Venus making this move out of that energy of Pisces into the energy of Aries. Now, Venus is not always comfortable here because Aries is assertive, he is aggressive, and he is about him, right? Like, Aries understands the energy of I, and this is a little bit of a struggle for, for some Venus. Of you with the Mercury in Pisces and with Venus in Aries, you may be experiencing some kind of return happening this week. I have Venus in Aries. And so, what are the strong points of Venus being in Aries? First of all, Venus is the planet of love, relationships, our needs, how we share our affections, how we need to receive them, right? And in the energy of Aries, Aries is about the self, the identity, um, getting the own needs met, which if you don't have that going, if you're too much of a giver and you never step in to say, I also need to receive, I also need to take, your relationships will come out of balance. So I think for all of us, we get this experience of these lessons over this next handful of weeks, but it starts this week. Venus is going to say here in Aries, what, what needs do we need to have met? Where do we need to give? Where do we need to take? Where is the self off balance somewhere? So where does this expression need to step up? So look at that in your lives. Wherever the Venus and Aries energy is happening in your chart, look at where you are at in the balance of the me and the we because Venus here in Aries is going to be boom. Now, Venus and Aries can also be quite impulsive, my friends. Oh, it can. Let me tell you, as someone who owns this placement, it can be quite impulsive. Mercury is in fall in Pisces. The details are not clear. So if someone or if an opportunity shows up at your door this week and you feel impulsive and I'm just going to take it, you might not be seeing everything for what it is. Make sure you have someone you trust. Get some other eyes on it. It's not that people are trying to step in your way. It's not that anybody wants to harsh your mellow. We want you to have what's best, right? But in the end, you do you. Just know that Venus and Aries can be very impulsive. And before you know it, you're in that relationship. Before you know it, you've bought that big old thing. Before you know it, you've accepted that job offer. And you're not clear on exactly what's right in front of you. But at the same time, I'm going to tell you what. Venus and Aries has also served me very well, and I think those with that placement can tell you that as well. When it's not being impulsive, Venus and Aries will go for what it wants. It will move towards what it wants, and this is an entirely powerful placement to take your love and your money and your harmony forward. Because don't forget, Venus is a planet of harmony. If you feel like your harmony is out of balance, what do you need to do to rebalance that? Okay. As we end this week, we are ending with a delicious full moon in the energy of big, bright, bold, feisty Leo energy. Now, the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So we're going to have a shift, bring maybe something to culmination this now, week. Because this moon is a full moon, we know it's in opposition. So we've got the Aquarian sun on the other side. And the full moon is like, this is the crescendo of the month, right? Like we've got it all going. All the light is shining here. So it's going to be time for you to look at your polarities, the me versus the we, right? The projects that I'm doing maybe that are very humanitarian versus the ones that I'm doing that also fulfill my own needs, right? So I'm going to tell you by the time we end this week, if there's been a project or something creative going on that you've been working on or you're ready to transition into a different phase, this will be a great energy to do that. The energy of Leo and Aquarian opposition it also says, where do you need to um, continue to move in some level of independence, right? Where do you want to be your own boss? Anything that has to do with leadership. I think that this is an awesome full moon to allow these things to transition or to handle any issues that are coming up with that as well. If you've been having problems at work, is it time to talk to the boss? Is it time to talk to that coworker? I mean, where is the Leo energy happening in your chart? Either way, this full moon will say, put on the big kid pants and let's go handle or bring these um, particular 
uh, issues or lessons to some kind of culmination or adjustment. So it's kind of an interesting week, I think, on our hands. We've got planets not in the most comfortable positions, but they can still be very, very effective, and they certainly do show up to help this Leo full moon kick us back and course correct us at the highest peak of this lunar cycle. It's going to be a great week, I think. All sorts of things are going to manifest. Please let me know in the comment section down below how this is manifesting for you. For all my friends who also have Venus and Aries, I just want to say woot woot, okay? This is our week. We're starting to have some return energy. All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you a ton, and I will see you next week. Bye.